The talk of the Formula One pit lane on Thursday and Friday at the Chinese Grand Prix was Mercedes' new front wing, a third specification we've seen already in 2019. So who better to explain to us what was going on with it than our technical expert, Jake boxall Leg? Now, Jake, we've got what I think we'll call the Thursday spec wing on the screen here because Mercedes had to change it due, due to a request from the FIA. But talk us through the original version of the wing and then we'll get on to what went on over kind of the 24 hours that followed and why it ended up looking different when the car hit the track. Yeah, okay, so this is wing number three. <laughs> and the most obvious thing is that they've reshaped the send plate. So it used to extend all the way along here and then had a little cut out at the top. And so the idea is to just turn more airflow around the front of the car. And then they've tried to take this to another extreme with this design here. So as you can see, the top flap just sort of pokes out at the back of the, uh, the end plate here. And so that's just trying to turn airflow outwards more aggressively. Um, they've got a load more space to play with. It gives them a lot of options with what they can do with creating rotational flow. You're going to get a little bit of a natural tip vortex at that point, And so they can kind of control that. And that just strengthens that outwash a little bit more. That's what they turned up with on Thursday. But as you said, they were forced to change it um, and ended up looking a little bit different. So as you can see from this dotted line here, that's what it was on Thursday. And then there was a technical directive by the FIA and they said, OK, uh, we're not entirely happy with this. Um, there's kind of a couple of rules that collide. I don't want to bore the lovely people at home with the intricacies of FIA technical regulations, but essentially there's sort of a little bit of a disconnect between what can and can't be bounded by the end plate. The elements are supposed to be, but there's a little bit of a loophole in the regulations where they can just do that. But the FIA said, that looks really sharp. It might puncture a tire or something. So Mercedes shaved it back a little bit and uh, added a little bit of a, a sort of cover to the end plate as well, just to try and make sure that what the FIA was saying uh, wasn't an issue anymore. That's the little piece here. It's just a little triangular section there. And then that's just covering that end plate, uh, that flap there on the end plate. So that just ensures that the FIA is happy. Uh, Mercedes were a little bit unhappy that they had to change it, but they were able to do it quickly in time for practice. So they were all good to go. Yeah, Mercedes did say that that change, they felt, cost them a little bit of performance, but they can't complain too much because they still had a 1-2. Let's focus on the shape of the end plate. It's very well highlighted in, in this image, and it's a much more drastic cutaway than what we saw before. You hinted that really all of the shapes that teams are starting to play with here, the gaps they're trying to create, are trying to get any sort of airflow to go outside of the front tyre because the rules that have simplified this entire piece for this year are all about preventing them from be, being able to do that. So is this just Mercedes' latest example of, actually, if you make the gap bigger up here, you can start to get that outwash, perhaps with not sacrificing too much performance? What's, what's the aim of the change that they've made here? You know, it's exactly that. It's just they were able to do this before by having that little cut out, that mm. little square section there. Um, but by shaping it like this, obviously, they've done some work in the wind tunnel, done a little bit of uh, playing the CFD and thought, OK, we can this is more so, we can get more out of this. And it's just about cleaning that area up, just making sure that you don't... Because what you the end plate is, it's a bit strange in a way because it's so restrictive. So by opening this up, you're just able to draw more airflow out, pen the tire wake in, which is the most damaging bit of the front of the floor. Um, and then, yeah, it's just going to improve your performance so much with the rest of the car because it's just not being interrupted by this massive turbulent weight. So that's the general idea. Another thing they've done as well is sort of truncate this foot plate here as well. You're getting another vortex off of that that's just trying to enhance that effect a little bit more. Mm. Has to do something similar as well. So you're able to use that little piece of the end plate to guide it out a little bit more. So there's been quite a few marked changes. Of course, as you mentioned, uh, Mercedes did feel they'd lost a little bit of performance and obviously the wing's not as they designed it. But yeah, it was still successful. Uh, they were still very dominant over the weekend, so they can't be too unhappy with that. Is this likely to be a trend then? Are we going to see teams perhaps looking at how much they can get away with getting rid of in this area if, it is, if that gap is succeeding in pulling air outwards and around the tyre? Yeah, well, there's, there's a limitation in it. So this end plate, it's created in what's called a virtual end plate surface. So that's the bounding box that defines how the end plate should look and should be shaped. And 95% of that must remain on the car. So presumably they make a load of drawings, submit it to the FIA, and then they can cut 95, uh, cut 5% off of it. And that's 
presumably their 5%. Mm -hmm. So they're going to try and do as much as they can, but within a limit. This is, you know, this is Formula One, after all, it's regulations. Yeah, that's, that's, their, that's their 5%, and it would be interesting to see how other teams interpret that, because that's probably to the limit of what it should be, and um, yeah, it'd be teams trying that kind of thing out again. You mentioned other teams there, and Mercedes weren't, in fact, the only team that's had to change a design ahead of the Chinese Grand Prix. We found a couple more on the grid where we've had some adjustments for China, so just talk us through those. Yeah, so this is the Red Bull first and foremost. Um, this is what ran in uh, Bahrain. You can see that top flap poking out the top, and they've had to change that again for this wing here. That was what was seen in China. It's a bit different because I think Red Bull knew almost ahead of time, because they were running this, and I think the FIA had run the rule over and said, okay, next time you can't use that. And obviously Mercedes weren't privy to that party. They were like, oh, we've got to make a quick change. Mm. But Red Bull, I think they ran with this in testing in Bahrain as well. Um, so you can kind of see already they're able to turn less airflow out. They're trying to do as much as they can in this portion of the wing here, but they just don't have as strong as effect. Uh, I don't think it'd be too detrimental, but it's just, you know, it's not an ideal world for them. Mm. And then there's the Williams example here. You can just see the same thing uh, on the piece closest to you. Um, that Up here. Yeah, that top flap just poking out a little bit more. And then here, you can't really see that too well because of the colour scheme, but it does attach at this corner here. Um, they've also changed the shape of the cutout as well to try and reflect that, just to be a little bit more deliberate in how they're trying to shape it. So it's all trying again to get this out wash, but the FIA are sort of trying to reel it back in, just trying to tell them you can't quite do that. Mm. So yeah, um, teams are taking a few liberties here and there, and it's quite interesting to see.